Welcome to Special Stage and our end of season review show packed with a recap of some of the championships and events we covered in 2016. Sit back and enjoy the next hour and a half of the UK's best rally, track and off-road racing, starting with a look back at the BTRDA season. Once again, the Cambrian attracted a great entry and the BTRDA season finale would return as the season opener, proving to be just as exciting as ever. Last year, we'll take this year as it comes with it being the first uh, round of the championship. We'll uh, go for points and be sensible. Every, the same, everybody will be the same. Just see how I go through the first two or three rounds, see what happens. If you're in the championship, you'll stay. If you're not in the championship, people will drop out. Simple as that. Three months nearly off, quite a long time out of a rally car, so it'll take a bit of getting used to this morning, I think. But uh, as long as it's somewhere near, I'll be happy. We're just going like, to go steady here. And and get the finish. BTRDA regular Charlie Payne took the early advantage on the morning stages, but it was close at the top. Ewan Thorburn out in his new Peugeot 208 R5 as a shakedown for his BRC campaign, just three seconds back as well. Luke Francis will be making the best of the home advantage to end the morning in third. Four seconds back from Thorburn. The afternoon would see the lead change hands on a number of occasions. Payne losing it to Francis after service before gaining it back briefly. And for Thorburn, there'd be problems dropping a little time down to sixth. This gave Conor McCloskey a chance to move up the results into third briefly before settling on fourth. His return to the BTRDA going well this weekend. But the battle at the top would continue right to the final stage of the day, with Charlie Payne going into the stage with a 10-second lead, coming out with second place. Luke Francis putting in a time good enough to take victory on his home event. The Malcolm Wilson Rally once again attracted a strong entry and as usual the tricky Lake District stages would catch many crews out including returning championship contender Conor McCloskey. His chances of a result sinking on stage two. The fight at the top may be missing one of its contenders but that didn't mean it was any less intense with David Wright taking the advantage after stage three. Charlie Payne close behind in second. Stephen Petch will be third at this stage, but they would reach the end of stage three with clutch problems in that Fiesta. The results would change throughout the afternoon. Wayne Sisson moving his way up to the final step on the podium and taking the B13 victory. Times would change hands all afternoon between Charlie Payne and David Wright. And sadly for Wright, a drive shaft would end his lead in the final stage, giving the victory to a surprised but delighted Charlie Payne. Russ Thompson would take the Group N victory at the end of the rally, looking like he was on the limit all day long before finally going just over it, causing plenty of damage, thankfully with just a few more corners of the rally to go. And in the Silver Star, Matthew Robinson looked to be back on form in the new car, taking the early lead with Gavin Edwards a close second. These and all the stages in the BTRDA this year new to Edwards. The results, however, would take a bit of a shake-up in the afternoon, with Boyd Kershaw upping the game in the afternoon stages and taking victory. Gavin Edwards still remaining in that second place, and Phil Burton taking third, despite a little trip into a ditch. In the 1400s, it would be the early lead for Dave Brick, 
looking to add win number two to his tally, but it wasn't to be. Retiring in the afternoon stages, meaning that it would be the win for Jordan Hone, despite himself having his own problems through the morning stages. And it would be second place in the 1400s for Matt Jackson, the second finish, and indeed the second strong result of the season. Seemingly the troubles of last season behind him. And in a relatively small rally first entry, it will be Dominic Hodge taking victory at the end of the rally over the Peugeot of Emily Retelig. Round three of the Ravenel BTRDA Championship headed to its most southerly event, the Somerset Stages. And the unique nature of the stages would see plenty caught out in a different set of results altogether. After victory last time out, it will be second place to start the day here for Charlie Payne. He'd have to chase down Luke Francis, who led the way early on, but with just a three-second lead at the midpoint in the event. Carl Simmons would be the closest to the leading cruise, third at the midpoint, but with a bigger 38-second gap to try and chase down Payne. And Martin and Dawn England bring the Fiesta out for its first BTRDA outing, setting some good pace as well in fourth position. In the Silver Star, it was a great start for Gavin Edwards. A lack of experience on the stage is not standing in the way of a 21-second lead. That lead over this man Boyd Kershaw, who was trying his best to reel him in and still have fun along the way. And for Phil Burton, it will be third, trying to catch the leading pair just eight seconds back from that flying Kiwi. It was a family affair in the 1400s, meanwhile. Dave Brick leading the way at the midpoint, son Freddie taking up second place for now. But that isn't how it would stay. Dave retiring in the afternoon, handing Freddie the first 1400 victory in the driver's seat. In rally first at the end of the rally, it will be the win for Chris Hickman, taking victory by 24 seconds over Emily Retallick in the Peugeot. There wouldn't be any change at the top of the Silver Star through the afternoon stages. Phil Burton unable to gain any more time on the leading cruise, ending the day with third. And for Boyd Kershaw, it would be second. A close battle, seeing him 10 seconds off the lead. But in that lead and taking victory was Gavin Edwards. A great result to strengthen a great season so far. And indeed, not much would change at the top overall. Carl Simmons happy to take third place in the Subaru. But the fight at the top would continue into the final stages once again. Charlie Payne unfortunately missing out by just eight seconds at the end of the event. Luke Francis, though, making it 2-1 this season and adding another victory to the score sheet. The Plains Rally this year celebrated its 50th anniversary and they couldn't have hoped for nicer weather, although with the sunshine came the dust and lots of it. The event played host, as always, to the BTRDA Rally Series and the Welsh Rally Championship as well, both providing spectacle and entertainment aplenty for the fans. Leader at the end of the morning stages would be Tom Cave, not registering for either championship on this one-off outing, though, outside of his BRC campaign. Julian Reynolds, however, did register for the BTRDA Series and after three stages would be leading the way there. 11 seconds above second place Luke Francis and second in the BTRDA Series, but leading the way in the Welsh Rally Championship contenders at the midpoint in the rally. They would leave Charlie Payne and Stephen Petch fighting it out below them for the final step on the BTRDA podium. Advantage Payne at this halfway point. In the BTRDA Silver Star, it will be Boyd Kershaw taking the early advantage. Just three seconds ahead of John Rowlands, the only one of the Rowlands brothers still going after Yeoham retired in stage three. Those two would have a lead over Phil Burton with a slightly bigger 17 seconds deficit there. And in the 1400s, it will be Jordan Hone leading the early charge. James Williams just 11 seconds back in second place. Things close as well there, with Chris Powell another three seconds back for third. And it was a great start for Emily Retallick as she leads the way in rally first with a 13 second advantage. Indeed, that's how it would stay into the afternoon stages, taking her first victory by 23 seconds. It would be all changed though in the 1400s through the afternoon. Chris Powell slipping back a little and down into second meaning it will be victory for James Williams, his first 1400 victory and probably not his last. 
The Silver Star would take a mix-up with Phil Burton dropping out of third place. Quite literally, his rally ending down a bank, but there would be no change at the top. John Rowlands still finishing three seconds back from day-long leader Boyd Kershaw. And at the top of the overall results, the only thing to change would be that final step on the BTRDA podium. Stephen Petch getting that much needed third place. Luke Francis holding his own and taking second place on the BTRDA podium. And of course, the Welsh Rally Championship victory at this round. But the top step on the BTRDA podium this weekend would go to Julian Reynolds, joining the series for selected outings this season with a view to a full campaign in 2017 and already making his mark. And with the championship battles behind him sorted, event victory this weekend would go to Tom Cave. As we go through this season review, don't forget you can catch all the coverage of these events in full on our YouTube channel. The Carlisle Stages would return to the BTRDA Championship for its second year. And once again, the rally didn't disappoint with its share of excitement and drama. Over the morning stages, it would be Matt Edwards taking the lead of the rally, impressing from the start as well in a one-off drive at that M Sport Fiesta. It would be close though, Desi Henry close behind, not registered for BTRDA points, but second at this stage in the overall event. And it will be the same for the next few positions on the leaderboard as well. Peter Taylor lying in third by the end of the morning stages and Johnny Greer taking up fourth. Both not here to score championship points, but going well from the start. Charlie Payne would in fact be the next BTRDA crew behind Edwards. Fifth place overall, but second in the points. His championship fight becoming a little easier with the loss of Luke Francis early on. The Evo driver suffering with damage to the underside of the car, putting him out of the rally. In the Silver Star, it will be Matthew Robinson taking the early lead in the crowd-pleasing 131 Mirafiori, getting the miles in on the car ahead of a trip to New Zealand at the end of the year. And his closest rival for the result this weekend would come from Cameron Davies, second place in the Silver Star and leading the Fiesta ST trophy in the process. In the 1400s, it will be Matt Smith leading the way. Sadly, not registered for BTRDA points this year, but showing good pace nonetheless. And that would leave Jordan home to take the lead in the class for the BTRDA crews at this midpoint. Over the second half of the event, the battle for the rally first victory would come to an end with Dominic Hodge taking victory from Richard Wells. The 1400 result, meanwhile, would see a shakeup as Matt Smith retires in the afternoon stage after losing a wheel, which would of course mean victory for Jordan Hone. The BTRDA points would always have been his, but this confirmed the top spot in the class nonetheless. Silver Star would see a change as well, Cameron Davies dropping down the results a little there, but only missing out on the runner-up place by three seconds, putting him behind Alan McDowell in the escort by the finish. But as expected, if everything went smoothly with the car at least, there will be no change at the top. Matthew Robinson putting the Fiat 131 on the top step of the podium for some good miles to add to the tally in the build-up to his New Zealand adventure. And just as they had right through the entry, with the attrition here in Carlisle on the west side of Kielder Forest, the results would change in the overall results. Matt Edwards unfortunately retiring from the lead in the final stages of the day, which would mean top BTRDA points for Charlie Payne this weekend, strengthening his championship campaign. But the overall results would tell a different story outside of the BTRDA, with Johnny Greer now stepping up to take third place in that DS3. 25 seconds back from Peter Taylor, showing the older generation of car was still capable of a good result in the right hands on the right day. But victory on this year's DMAC Carlisle stages would go to Desi Henry. A close battle with Edwards showed the pace was there. He takes victory by 38 seconds by the finish. This weekend would see both the BTRDA and the Welsh Rally Championship coming together for round six of both series. And as always, there will be some championship changing results. Over the opening stages, it will be Charlie Payne that takes the lead. Problems with the fuel pump seem to be causing a worry for the afternoon stages though. Luke Francis will be the closest challenger at this stage, seven seconds back from Payne and in the lead of the Welsh Championship part of the event. Problems of his own on stage four would give the team some work to do in service. 
The group end fight, as we've come to expect now, will be close to this weekend. Andy Davies coming back to service with the lead in that one, but the advantage would only be 0.2 of a second over Russ Thompson. So it really was all to play for in the afternoon. Sadly, not everyone will be having a good run. We lose Plains Rally winner Julian Reynolds with high water temperature in the morning stages. But worse would come for Steve Simpson. He puts the Fiesta off into a ditch on the opening stage of the rally. No real damage, but unable to get back out and continue. Frustration so early on. Gavin Edwards takes the morning lead in the Silver Star. A good 21 seconds of an advantage as well over Phil Burton, who was struggling with the condition on the stages. And returning after his planes rally crash as well, perhaps struggling with confidence also. Chris Powell makes the best of starts in the 1400s. He takes the early lead over previous round 1400 winner Jordan Holm. And the rally first battle will be a close one this weekend. Richard Wells just managing to keep Dominic Hodge at bay for the first half of the day. Sadly for Hodge though, it would all come to an end in the afternoon, leaving Emily Retallick to take that second place behind Richard Wells at the finish. She'd been there or thereabouts all day. The 1400 battle would indeed stay as it was. Chris Powell taking victory, but the second place for Jordan Hearn would be a significant one for those championship points. We'd see change in the Silver Star at this stage, with a puncture costing Phil Burton his second place, vacating that podium place for Boyd Kershaw to take up. A good result for him after a less than ideal day on the stages. But victory in the Silver Star this weekend belonged to this man, Gavin Edwards, a result which would see him on the third step of the Welsh Championship podium as well this weekend. Frustratingly for Group N leader Andy Davies, it would be the end of the road in stage six with a broken ball joint, meaning it was the win for Russ Thompson this weekend in that close battle. And the results at the top would see some change as well. We lose Charlie Payne, the problems on the car turning out to be something altogether very different, ending their good run through this event, which would of course mean victory for Luke Francis in both the BTRDA and the Welsh Rally Championship, but not before a moment of his own, which would slice part of the wing clean off the car. And it was a good run for Martin England, which would see him join Francis and Gavin Edwards on the podium in the Welsh Championship. Another new face and car for the championship. After a short break, the BTRDA Championship crews descended on Shropshire, rolling countryside, stunning views and autumn sunshine. Unfortunately, that was yesterday. Today was a different story. This weekend would be all about the championship, the battle between Luke Francis and Charlie Payne. The maths had been done. They knew what they had to do. Francis only had to finish here to take the BTRDA fight to the final round. Unfortunately for him, he would crash out on stage two, his BTRDA hopes disappearing. For Charlie Payne, seeing Francis off the road would add the pressure of finishing himself. The conditions were tricky and there would still be four more stages to get through. He does though maintain second place through the next few stages, going into service happy with holding on to that position. Coming to the championship battle a little late would be Stephen Petch. His pace had been consistent all year but at a pace not quite there. This weekend, however, was a different story, leading the way to start the day and by a good margin too. Callum Black brings out the new car for its first outing and some good pace sees him in third. There would surely be more to come from him with a few more events and a bit more seat time in that car. And in the Silver Star, Gavin Edwards would be back on top at the early stage, leading the way over Boyd Kershaw. Just one second at the end of stage two, separating them. But that would extend to 24 by the end of the fourth stage of the round. In the 1400s, Dave Brick would extend a comfortable two-minute lead by the second half of the day. His local stages and the conditions were suiting his driving style too. Rick's closest competition at this stage would be Matt Jackson. Things working well this weekend, the car giving a bit of reliability to lie second in the 1400s. And in the rally first, it would be Richard Wells leading the way after stage four. He'd been battling with Emily Retallick in the morning, but some lost time puts her down the results a little and hands second to Dominic Hodge, which is indeed how the event would end, with Hodge taking that second place and Richard Wells taking the rally first victory. The 1400s would remain the same too, with Matt Jackson happy to make it to the finish, but second place, an added bonus. 
There would, however, be no catching Dave Brick. Everything had gone to plan this weekend. He takes the 1400 victory. In the Silver Star, Gavin Edwards goes into the final stage with a healthy lead, backing off to play it safe. Unfortunately, a little too much, and only just retaining the lead by the finish, with Boyd Kershaw narrowly missing out on the Silver Star victory by just four seconds. But all of those stories would have to wait until the final round in Yorkshire. For this weekend, it would be all about the Gold Star. And with a nervous final few stages, it will be Charlie Payne coming out on top, taking the 2016 championship title this weekend. Previous champion Sean Gardner climbs his way up the results in the final stages to make the final step on the podium and throw another potential contender into the ring for next season. But this weekend, it will be victory for Stephen Petz. The win finally coming too late for this season's title, but a boost of confidence ready for a full-on attack in 2017. Track Rod Rally Yorkshire marks the end of an action-packed season in the BTRDA. And this weekend will be no different either. With battles still to be had in most categories, it will be gloves off from the start. Charlie Payne took the early honours. He had the championship in the bag, but the co-driver title was still to be settled here. Carl Williamson now in prime position to take that home with him this weekend and join his driver on the top step of the podium. Carl's closest rival for the co-driver's title will be just 21 seconds behind, though. Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson struggling a little with anti-lag problems in the opening stages of the day. The Group N fight will be another to be decided here this weekend. Richard Hill taking the lead there, but not in line for the championship. That task would fall to Russ Thompson. He needed a good result here, but not necessarily victory. So the drive this weekend will be a calculated one, and one which needed managing. In the Silver Star, it will be Gavin Edwards leading after the opening stages of the day. And indeed, he arrives back at service as our new Silver Star champion. His battle this weekend will be with current champion Boyd Kershaw. But sadly, Kershaw rolls the car on the opening stage of the rally. In the 1400s, it was Jordan Hone's championship to lose this weekend. No doubt feeling the pressure and hearing every noise from the car as he leads the way and tries to ensure that he reaches the finish. The return of previous Rally First champion Joe Evitt would be where second place in the 1400s would be at this stage. 34 seconds back from home. And in Rally First, it was looking good for Dominic Hodge. He was favourite to win going into this round, but it was a tough event and he still needed to push to the finish. Over the next stage, there wouldn't be any change at the top. Charlie Payne still doing what he needed to do for his co-driver and indeed for the local honours. The Silver Star would see some change though. Gavin Edwards dropping down the times and retiring soon afterwards. The dry sump reservoir in the boot of the car coming loose. He didn't want to cause any more damage or risk what could potentially happen with something like that. So the lead in the Silver Star for this weekend now belonged to Phil Burton. On to the final stages of the event and the rally first would see a change. Richard Wells taking victory this weekend, but that didn't affect the championship overall. Dominic Hodge taking an emotional second place this weekend, enough to give him the championship victory for 2016. In the 1400s, it would be plain sailing for Jordan Hone, meanwhile. After an up and down season, the championship was finally his, taking victory here over Joe Evitt, but the championship title going over the water to Ireland. With Gavin Edwards taking the title in the Silver Star despite retiring at the final round, it left Phil Burton to take up the lead position. He held that to the finish, a good end to a mixed season for Burton. In the overall results, we wouldn't see any change at the top. Russ Thompson walks away this weekend with the Group N title, and it would be a good result of third place as well for Phil Pickard. Despite some issues during the day, hopefully this result will see him campaigning the car full-time in the BTRDA next season. And frustration for Michael Wilkinson. It would have to be second place in the event overall. And indeed, that was how the co-driver battle would end up as well. Himself and Stephen Petch not managing to take the victory they'd come here looking for in Yorkshire. So for this weekend, it would be victory for Charlie Payne, securing his co-driver Carl Williamson a place by his side as 2016 BTRDA champions finishing on the top of the podium at the final round.
Round one of the 2016 Mintex British Historic Rally Championship kicked off in a rather wet and foggy Wales this weekend at the Red Kite stages. But that didn't stop the competitors from putting on a show for those that brave the conditions to go and marshal or spectate on the event. Jason Pritchard came into this event with it all to prove after taking the title in 2015. But a crash on the final round of the year would surely be playing on his mind. He started the event as he meant to go on though with a small lead. That may have been a different story though had it not been for problems in the Elliott and Price camp. The pair were going well but a storm midway through one of the stages would see the time slipping away while they tried to get it restarted. And in fact, not only would they be sat chasing down the lead, they would also have to watch that they didn't lose that second place, with Joe Price posting an identical time overall after the second stage, and Paul Barrett just a further five seconds behind in fourth place. With the escort dominance at the top of the results, it would be up to Matthew Robinson to mix things up a little, campaigning the rather more unique Fiat 131 and settling in well at the early stage in fifth. Small changes in the next stage would see Paul Barrett climb a little to take up third, although slipping away from the lead a little, but not as much as Joe Price, who drops a chunk of the time in stage three. He had his suspicions where he was losing it, but he couldn't be too sure. It would be a three-way battle in category two at this point, with John Perrett leading the way there with a small advantage. But he would have to watch out for Simon Tyso and Stanley Orr, as they lie behind him in second and third, respectively. Just a single second between those two at this stage. And there will be a battle starting to unfold for the category one result here at round one, with Bob Gibbons just edging out a seven-second advantage over Bob Bean in that Cortina battle. In the afternoon, there would be no change at the top, with Jason Pritchard continuing to lead the way. 26 seconds of an advantage now, but the notable change would come from Joe Price, who steps up to take second place. Nick Elliott was struggling, another stall in the stage, taking away any chances of a win, and it would be about taking what he could get from round one. But he'd still managed to keep Paul Barrett at bay and knock the Northern Irishman down to fourth place. And indeed for Barrett, that's how it would end, with fourth place overall and a class win. But despite only one more stage to finish the day, there would be some change at the top, with Nick Elliott just managing to claim back his second place and salvage a good amount of points from what he would put down as a bad day at the office. But that, of course, means no change for Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark in the final stage. The advantage at the front was a little smaller by the finish, but they did enough to start their 2016 season as they mean to carry on. Change wouldn't be limited to the top of the results, with John Perrett having problems in the final stage of the event in the Category 2 battle, meaning it's the win for Stanley Orr and Guy Weaver, dedicating the category victory to David Stokes at the finish. And it would be a close battle for Bob Gibbons and Bob Bean all day. Sadly for Bean, it would be disappointment in the final stage when he goes OTL, and it would be Gibbons that finally gets a category win after trying for so long. Round two of the Mintex British Historic Rally Championship, just like round one, took place in tricky conditions and the quality entry would make for some close competition. Once again, it would be Jason Pritchard that took the lead. Six seconds of an advantage on the opening two stages, extending that to 14 seconds by the end of stage three. For Nick Elliott, it would be an all too familiar start to the event. Hitting a chicane on stage one and a return of the car's mysterious starting problems, meaning that he loses around 30 seconds and drops down the results. Paul Barrett comes to round two on the back of a great result last time out, but a puncture early into the opening stage would set him right back on the leaderboard. While for Joe Price, things would be going okay. A few small mistakes would lose him a little time, but he reaches service with third overall. Stanley Orr reaches service with the lead in Category 2 with some good times putting him in 6th place on the overall results as well. But it had been that way from the start with Adam Milner once again showing a giant killing pace to lead the category and even record a joint 2nd fastest time overall on the opening stage. Sadly that would come to an end on Stage 3 when he crashes out. And in Category 1 it would be the lead for Round 1 winner Bob Gibbons taking the early advantage in the category over Bob Bean and reigniting that battle from the opening round this weekend. 
and that would be a battle that continued into the afternoon, but it would be Gibbons that comes out on top once again and takes the category victory here at round two. Phil Jobson has a good run in category two, taking second place at the end of the event, but the lead would remain with Stanley Orr to the finish, taking his second category win in as many events. In the overall results, it would sadly be a drop down to ninth place overall for Joe Price in the final stage, but it will be a great afternoon for Paul Barrett. A recovery mission after the stage one puncture would see him move up to take third place overall and the class win. The opening stage's mistake would be the one that potentially lost the event for Nick Elliott, but a good run after that would see second place at the finish once again. Not ideal, but this was only the start of a long championship season ahead. And that, of course, meant that Jason Pritchard takes the win here at Rally North Wales, adding another maximum points score to his championship campaign to continue his defence of the title. Round three of the Mintex British Historic Rally Championship ventured out of Wales for the first time this season with a trip north to the Pirelli Carlisle Rally and the legendary Killakilda awaited the crews. And it wouldn't take long for that reputation to come true, with previous round's winner Jason Pritchard getting caught out and his rally ending in a stage one ditch. So that left Nick Elliott to take the lead. His starting problems hopefully sorted now and stage one will provide an early 18 seconds advantage for the pair. Joe Price comes to the round looking for a podium. He would be happy with third, but for now he was going one better and lying in second overall. And following the bad luck at the start of round one, it would be the final step on the podium for Paul Barrett after stage one. No punctures this time round and less than a second off the time set by Price. In category two, it would be the lead once again for Stanley Orr, a good cushion of time setting him up for the rest of the day's stages. His closest rival would once again be Simon Tyso. 16 seconds would be the gap after stage one, but it was of course far from over yet. And with the absence of Bob Gibbons from the entry this weekend, the Category 1 win would be going to someone else here at Round 3, with Bob Bean taking the early advantage there over Paul Mankin in the other Cortina. Over Stage 2, there wouldn't be any change in the top of the results. Nick Elliott extends the advantage now to 29 seconds and would be sitting relatively comfortable going into the afternoon stages. Joe Price wasn't able to catch the leaders, but he was managing to edge out a small gap of his own now, the difference to Paul Barrett increasing from less than a second to just over 10 now. Stanley Orr still leads the way in Category 2, his advantage now growing to over a minute, and we see second place now being occupied by Warren Philliskirk. Bob Bean would also extend the advantage in Category 1, the gap still only 35 seconds, so there would be no backing off with two long stages to go. And indeed, that would be how it ended, keeping the pace up and taking his first category win of the season. Stanley Orr reaches the end of the event this weekend with the category win, making it three from three and proving to be the one to beat this season. He takes the victory over Simon Tyso, who manages to step back up to second place in the second half of the day. But the real change would come at the top of the results as Nick Elliott heads into the second half of the day with what should have been a comfortable lead, only for a mistake in stage three to put a very abrupt end to that challenge. So that meant all change at the top of the results. Matthew Robinson capitalises on the changes and moves up for his best finish in the Fiat, 30 seconds behind Paul Barrett, himself finally getting onto the podium this season with second place. But that means that it was the win here this weekend for Joe Price. He came for a podium and he couldn't have hoped for a better finish. The results this weekend certainly mixing up the championship as we get closer to the midpoint in the season. The Severn Valley stages would be the fourth time out this season for the Mintex British Historic Championship. And for the first time, the sun was shining. But of course, that would mean dust and plenty of it. With the shake-up in the weather came a shake-up in the results, but for Joe Price, winner at the previous round, it would be a lead to start the day here at round four. After crashing out at the previous round, Jason Pritchard will be looking for a finish here, starting the day with fifth, but that would all come to an end on stage four when he rolled the car close to the finish of the stage. Nick Elliott would be back after a crash of his own last time out, this time in the old car until the new one is fixed, but things were going okay with third place for now and soon to be second going into the afternoon stages.
it will be a second place he takes from Paul Barrett, who starts the day well with second, but a bad run through Radner would drop him to third for the next loop. Adam Milner once again showed some fantastic pace in Category 2, not only leading the category, but lying in fourth overall amongst the leading crews. Sadly, that would turn to fifth when he caught some dust in Stage 4. Dust from Stanley Orr, who was suffering all day with punctures, meaning the category win wasn't looking likely for him this time round. And the Category 1 lead at this stage would be in the hands of Bob Bean, winner last time out, and the confidence was high coming into this round. And indeed, that would continue to the end of the event, being taken the category win to make it two in a row. Sadly for Adam Milner, his good run would come to an end in the final stage when he looked set to make the category win and fourth place overall, but would clip a bank and retire in the stage. This meant that it would be the first category win of the season for Simon Tyso. It had been close going into the final stage, just two seconds behind Milner, but the win belonged to Tyso this weekend. The drama wasn't contained to Category 2. The top of the results would also see many changes, the first of which would be the loss of Joe Price. He has a problem with the car in Stage 6 and drops right down to 15th place. So that left the door open for Nick Elliott to take the lead, already jumping past Paul Barrett on the results in the early stages. But sadly, the drama wasn't over yet, with Elliott getting a puncture in the final stage and dropping out of the lead and into second place. That, of course, means that it's Paul Barrett who will be there to pick up that place. There were only six seconds between them going into the final stage, but the win was certainly unexpected. But welcome for the current championship leader. The Harry Flatters Rally marked the coming together of both the British Historic Rally Championship and the RAC Rally Championship for the first time this season and will be the first time on asphalt this season for the BHRC contenders. As usual, Epin lives up to its reputation with a number of the championship contenders from both series retiring throughout the event's five long stages, including early leader Jason Pritchard who went out with engine problems on stage two. This left Neil Williams to take the lead on the second stage of the day, second to Pritchard last year on the event, so this year was looking good for the win. Rob Smith makes his first appearance this season, with good times putting him close to the top of the results. Sadly, on stage three, it would all go wrong when he rolls the car out of the event. That meant that by the midway point, the lead in the RAC Championship battle would belong to Guy Woodcock. His first outing since the Isle of Man last year, just like a few others, but the pace was there now. Amongst some of the regular BHRC crews, it would be a bad start for Joe Price. Problems at the start of the event meant a drop down the bottom half of the results, but he was still going. With others retiring around him, it would be important to keep going for those championship points. There will be better news for Paul Barrett, his first time on these stages and things were going well, lying third in the points at the midpoint in the day. Simon Tyso would be the early leader for Category 2, and by the midpoint, he climbed up into the top of the overall results too, with second in the championship crews. It would be a battle he had a good lead of due to the loss of his regular rival and previous category winner, Stanley Orr, retiring on Stage 1 with electrical problems. In Category 1, Bob Gibbons returns to good form after problems on the previous round, taking the lead there from the early stage. The category would also add to the increasing retirements list early on with the loss of Phil Harris in the Mini. Engine problems for him would force retirement after the opening stage. Into the afternoon, nothing would change, with Bob Gibbons happy to keep hold of the lead and take the victory in Category 1, with Paul Mankin overcoming some problems to take second in the Porsche. The Category 2 fight wouldn't change either, with Simon Tyso taking the victory there. Another Category win to add to the list this season and promising results going to the second half of the season. And for Neil Williams, it would be a perfect weekend, taking the win after gaining the lead early in the event and bettering his second place finish of last year's event. The result here for Paul Barrett means the championship win that started off as a long shot was now looking very possible. Good points from this round strengthened the lead and all eyes would now be on the second half of the season. In the RAC Championship, there wouldn't be any change in the second half of the day for Guy Woodcock. He settles back into the car after the long break and takes maximum points ready to head back to the Isle of Man in September.
A wet and windy day faced the crews for round six of the Mintouch British Historic Rally Championship and with some of the crews missing, it would be a chance for others to try and get their season back on track. Nick Elliott would be the one leading the way after the morning's first two stages. A suspected diff problem would cause a worry, but it would be traced to a broken wheel, certainly a relief as he needed the points this weekend. Joe Price would be closest to Elliott, a late entry this weekend, to try and get himself some much-needed points too. Not happy with the feeling in the car coming into service, but then not many would be. Steve Bennett will be having a good run, not feeling happy in the car either, but with everyone reporting the same problems at the end of the stage, it seemed that they were doing better than expected. Third place for now. And for Jason Pritchard, points here would be vital. A bad season recently would need to be turned around before the Isle of Man in September. In Category 2, it would be Simon Tyso that leads the way. Stanley Orr not here this weekend, so his main rival will be Warren Phyllis-Kirk, 21 seconds behind after Stage 2 of the event, himself having a spin in the first stage of the morning. And in Cat 1, it would just be Bob Gibbons this weekend. The category would be his if he could finish, but the overall results were what he had his eye on. Over the next few stages, it would be all change. Nick Elliott suffers a puncture in this loop and loses some time, thankfully only dropping around a minute, but it would be enough to make him work for a result going into the final stage. So the change at the top would now mean the lead for Joe Price, going well but still not 100% confident, trying to get round the stages without a puncture or any damage. Jason Pritchard wouldn't be enjoying the conditions, but with a handful of non-finishes already, he needed this result and needed to push on through the final stage, and lies in third place at this point. There wouldn't be any change in the category lead for Simon Tyso. Gearbox problems all day had meant things were not going exactly as a plan, but he was still going, which was the main thing. His main rival in that class would be Warren Phyllis-Kirk, who manages to avoid any spins in this loop of stages and get a good clean run now some of the top layer of mud had gone. And of course for Bob Gibbons it would still all go to plan for the category result, and indeed that's how it would end, taking the category win from this round and looking good for the championship on the Isle of Man next time out. And over that final stage of the event, the drama wasn't over, with Joe Price going into the stage in the lead. The maximum points looking good, the conditions would unfortunately get the better of him, and he'd slip off the road and damage the car. Unable to continue, it'd be retirement after such a strong run on the event. So that of course meant change in the lead, and for Nick Elliott that would mean victory. He needed the result as much as anyone, especially as he wouldn't be in the Isle of Man, so the victory would be welcomed. It wouldn't be an easy win though, holding off Jason Pritchard in the final stage to take the victory by only three seconds. Pritchard missing out on maximum points by that small margin, but happy just to get to the finish and get some points on board. And no change at the end of the day for Category 2 runner Simon Tyso. Victory this weekend over Warren Phyllis-Kirk sets him up nicely for a good category battle on the Isle of Man in September. The next stop for the crews in the Mintex British Historic Rally Championship would be the Isle of Man, the longest and one of the most demanding events in the calendar. And with the event being split into two parts, it means double chance of adding to the championship points total if things go to plan. On to the stages then, three in total this evening and of course run entirely in the dark. Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann were expected to go well, having done the event for the last few years and they did just that. So they lead the way at the end of the first day by around five seconds. The pressure would be on for Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark. Their season hadn't gone to plan with a string of non-finishes in the middle and the Isle of Man this weekend will be the last chance to salvage a win in the championship. Second place for now and happy things were going okay. Stanley Orr and Guy Weaver come here looking to take the Category 2 win for the season. Missing the last round meant that both scoring rounds this weekend would be important. They put in some fantastic times on the opening day to lie in third place overall and lead the Category 2 fight. Paul Barrett and Di Roberts come into this round with a chance at the championship title. It wasn't something they expected at the start of the season, but it was a reality now. They have a few issues with the right setup of the car, but end the day in fourth. Last year's event hadn't been good to Sean Rayner and Declan Day, crashing out on the second day. They make a cautious start to the event through the night stages and end day one with fifth place overall. Simon Tyso and Paul Morris had a good run through the opening stages, but were disappointed with their pace. At least now they knew what the pace was at the top, and they could up their game on day two. So the crews got some rest last night, which is probably good, because plenty more stages today, including the end of the first point scoring round this weekend. So let's head out to the stages to bring you all the action. Full stages this morning for the crews with just less than 40 miles for the crews to cover and it would be all change at the top with Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark now leading the way and now with a good margin of around 30 seconds. Ignition problems in this morning's stages will see Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann drop from the lead. Thankfully the pair managed to maintain a place at the top with second overall and will be on a push to get back up to the lead in the next few stages. 
Paul Barrett and Di Roberts were happy with the pace now. The setup issues from last night were sorted and the pair could enjoy the stages and have a push third place for now and leading the D3 class. Stanley Orr and Guy Weaver would unfortunately drop a place overall in this loop, lying in fourth place for now, but that will be incidental as they reach service with engine problems and sadly would have to retire. This of course meant that for Simon Tyso and Paul Morris it would now be the category lead. Things were going okay for the pair, the pace was improving and they were getting used to the stages now. On to the final two stages in this leg of the event and of course the first of the point scoring rounds. No change at the top, Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark still lead the way and indeed collect a maximum score on this round. It would go some way to help with the championship but it was far from over yet. Things were starting to improve again for Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann. The car repaired now and able to push. They get to the end of the leg with second place just eight seconds back from Pritchard ahead. Paul Barrett and Di Roberts hang on to third in this loop, a good result towards the championship and a good place to be in overall. Things were going well, but they had plenty more to do if they wanted to keep their chance at the championship win this season. The loss of Stanley Orr means that the job of category win becomes a bit easier for Simon Tyso and Paul Morris. It didn't mean they could back off, but this round of the championship was done and the win was theirs. The change above means they move up the results for everyone, and that of course means fifth place for Sean Rayner and Declan Deer. With this morning scare behind them, it was a much less stressful run to end the leg. Into one left, into one right, don't cut. Up the middle, do these, 200. So Jason takes the win at the first of this weekend's rounds, but of course he and all the crews have got to do it all again. Starting this evening, five stages heading into the dark, all that action coming up next. Friday evening marks the second of the points scoring rounds this weekend and possibly the most challenging with five stages in the dark without service. Scoring for this second round starts the clocks again from zero but we pick up the story from the overall results at the end of the last leg. No change in the lead for Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark. Their advantage at the top was still around 30 seconds. They opted for a harder tyre to get them through the five stages without service but unfortunately that was the wrong choice. Thankfully not losing them the lead though. The comeback was on for Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann, still second place for now, and once they had rested overnight, they'd be ready for a push on the third and final day of the competition. No change in the final step of the podium place for Paul Barrett and Di Roberts. They had a bit of work to do on the car overnight, nothing major, and they'd be ready to do it all again on day three. With the loss of their category rivals, it will be plain sailing for Simon Tyso and Paul Morris in this loop. They're focused now on the overall times and learning the unfamiliar stages. No change for Sean Rayner and Declan Deer as they remain second in the D3 class and fifth place overall. They were happy to get through the final night stages and head into the final day without any issues. On to day three, the final day of the rally. Four stages in this loop for the crews. Repeats of previously used stages and just over 30 miles for the crews to tackle. The results at the top don't change much from where we left them on day two. Jason Pitchard and Phil Clark continue to lead the way, but the gap was now closing with his advantage at the top down to just 10 seconds. Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann were gaining back some of the lost time now. They were within 10 seconds of the lead and with two more stages to go, they intend on catching Pritchard to take the overall win. Paul Barrett and Di Roberts were giving everything they could now. The times were good, the car outclassed by those ahead, but the pair were still managing to keep up and remain in third place with just two stages to go. For Simon Tyso and Paul Morris, the result was looking good. They continued to lead the way in Category 2, and with news coming from the stages that Phil Jobson and Arwell Jenkins had gone off, it looked like their lead in the category would be extended even further now. And for Sean Rayner and Declan Deer, things were still going to plan. Fifth place overall for now and second in the class, a result they'd be happy to keep to the end of the event, given the choice. On to those final stages then, including the classic with the crews finishing in front of the TT grandstand. Sadly for Simon Tyso and Paul Morris, they would go off into a ditch in this final loop, lose around 10 minutes and with it the lead of Category 2. After much help from the spectators, they do get going again and end the day with 10th place overall. But the result this weekend does secure them the category win overall in the championship this season. It will be a welcome finish for Bob and Dale Gibbons. They take the win in Category 1 this weekend for a second time and with it they secure their place as champions in the category for 2016. For Barry Jordan and James Gratton-Smith, the loss of Tyso from the Category 2 lead would mean the win would be theirs. A great end to the event and the first time a non-Ford car had won the category. A great reward for campaigning something different in the BHRC. 
On to the podium places then, and it will be third for Sean Rayner and Declan Deer. A surprise for the pair who didn't quite believe it, but consistency and some good pace helped them be there when others around were retiring. Sadly, one of those would be Ryan Barrett and Paul McCann. Their good run and chances of a win were ended in the final stages when they retire with a lack of oil pressure in the escort. This, of course, handed that second place to his brother, Paul Barrett and Di Roberts, taking that runner-up place at the end of the event. The title fight going into the final round at the track rod in a few weeks' time. But for this weekend and for the second time in the event, it would be the win for Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark. They hadn't had it easy and the pressure was on. Only the final round stood in the way of his championship title, but it was far from over yet. The final round of the Mintex British Historic Rally Championship took the crews to Yorkshire and the action starts with a run through Dolby in the dark. Matthew Robinson will be back out for his local event, leading the way by a significant 26 seconds after the opening stage of the event. For Jason Pritchard, it would be second. He didn't need to win, just to finish towards the top of the results and the championship would be his. So this weekend would be a calculated drive. After a break overnight, day two would see some changes to the results, but not to the lead. Matthew Robinson's advantage was growing. 55 seconds now and it looked like the car was starting to be a match for the escorts and the development was paying off. He leads the way over Steve Bennett. Problems on the night stage hadn't helped the times, but things were starting to improve now. Adam Milner returns to the stages after some time away. The pace was good once again, but it was the finishing record that was his downfall on previous events. For now, he leads Category 2 and lies in third overall. Over the middle loop, things would change throughout the results. Steve Bennett would now lead the way after Matthew Robinson doesn't make it back out of service with a prop shaft issue. It would also be a place gained for Adam Milner overall, up to second now, and of course still leading the category over Warren Phyllis Kirk. There will be a battle this weekend in the D3 class, with Sean Rayner leading the way there. He'll be fighting for that place with Ben Friend, who unfortunately loses some time in this loop with a couple of spins. And indeed, that's how the battle would end, with Rayner coming out on top at the end of the event and taking the D3 class win for the season. For the Category 1 result, it will be Bob Bean taking the honours this weekend, the car's last event before a reshell over the winter and some much-needed TLC. Adam Milner manages to keep the pace and reliability this weekend as he reached the end of the event with a Category 2 win and, more impressively, the times mean he finishes second place overall. And for Jason Pritchard, this weekend was about the championship. He gives a measured drive to the finish to take third place overall, but, of course, maintains his title of the British Historic Champion for 2016. But this weekend the win would belong to Steve Bennett. He'd given himself the target of a win before the end of the season and he did just that, 47 seconds ahead at the finish. Starting in 1969 as a one-night road rally, the Mole Rally would instantly become a hit with crews from near and far. But it would be over 20 years later when we saw the closed road stage rally format of today make its first appearance. You have to be extremely committed from the first corner to the last year because the competition levels are massive. <laughs> Yes, yeah, good start, clean, clean start, so it's nice for a change for me. We're here, we can still progress, that's the whole point of this weekend, is to get it the way we want it. We're on Irish sense just now, this is not Ireland. I broke a drive shaft in the long stage with a jump, so I'm just going to have to go for it, aren't I? <laughs> it's there to be had, you know, for 15 and a half miles or something, it's a bit of an ask, but I'll have a go. It's a massive win, it's, uh, it's kind of the, the, the best we could have hoped for, isn't it? The best way to respond, so I'm very happy.
This weekend saw crews take on the challenge of the Alice Sport Hill Rally and the sunshine and dust of last year had been replaced by fog and mud. Chris Bird would be the fastest on the opening stages, taking the lead early on, but sadly that was short-lived with clutch problems, meaning a drop down to last place by the end of the day. This left things a little easier for winner of the previous Hill Rally, Greg Clement. He'd been putting in some leading times and now with the loss of Bird, the gap at the top had opened up a little. Ed Copley was out in the new bowler this weekend, sadly a short-lived run with some suspension issues forced a very early stage one retirement of the car. So the fight at the top would now be between Clement and a few other crews, one of which being Rob Scone, putting in some good times and climbing right up the order. Sadly his event would come to an end with issues midway through the event. Jason Elphick would also have a good run, the times were good, the results were putting him up the podium fights, but unfortunately his rally would eventually come to an end too, midway through the second day. This meant that for Henry Webster, Luck would finally be on his side with the car and crew working together well, not giving any problems for a change, and meaning that second place was the result at the end of the event, a fantastic achievement to be mixed in with the top of the results in the production car. Amongst the other battles, third place would be the result of Simon Haycock, a good drive all weekend and gradually moving up the times to take that final podium place. It will be a bitter end for Martin Jones, up as high as the podium places, but a final stage puncture would see the wheel of the car destroyed, along with the hopes of that podium place. Aside from the win, there was one other big story this weekend, with Chris Bird resigned to last place on day one. Repairs were made to the car and he'll be back out to try and work his way up the results. Some impressive times throughout the day would see him manage to jump from last to seventh by the end of the event, and only two minutes off the podium places. But there was no taking that victory away from Greg Clement. He makes it two Hill Rally wins in a row, proving that the pace in that new car this season was making him one to watch for anything that he enters. On the 14th of May 1966, the Griffiths Formula Race saw the dawn of a new era for motor racing. Sports cars built before 1955, obsolete for 10 years or more, were finally back on the grid, finally able to build their legacy. That legacy has become the historic sports car club and arguably everything else we now know about historic racing. In 2016, the HSCC celebrates 50 years of being top of the ranks for historic motor racing, and SSTV joined the original cars and drivers back on the grid at Castle Coombe to recreate the race that started it all. The start of a year of high-profile events to mark 50 years of being Britain's leading organiser of historic motor racing the HSCC's season opener featured a wide variety of championships, star cars and star drivers. A tyre-shredding tribute to the action which has, for the last 50 years, characterised 60s, 70s and 80s revival sports car racing. This is where it all began. The future of racing is history. It starts here. With a great entry, competition would be tough on this year's Harry Flatters Rally. And for multiple time winner of the event, Damien Cole, it would be a bad start. A puncture on stage one, dropping into 10th and with a big push to get back to the top of the results. This left Andy Fraser in the lead. The car finished with some last minute prep before the event, but thankfully things were running well to take a small lead by the midpoint of the day. Sadly for Adrian Spencer, a brush with a sheep on the stages would cause some cosmetic damage to the car, but things were still pointing in the right direction and he was able to keep himself on the podium for now. Bob Fowden had gained some good results already in the new car, but this would be the first time on these stages. The knowledge was there, but the car was taking some time to settle into. Fourth place would be his by the midpoint. The battle would continue throughout the day with Fowder unable to keep the pace up and put the car on the third step of the podium at the end of the event. And Adrian Spencer, with the front end now partially made out of cardboard, would manage to take second. 
Sadly for early leader Andy Fraser, it will be a bad end to the event. A push from Damien Coleman, he drops to second going into the final stage. But disaster would come at the end of the final stage when the car caught fire. Thankfully, the crew both OK, and the quick thinking and help from fellow competitors and marshals helped to eventually get the fire under control. So that means that with a comeback from the stage one puncture, it would be the win for Damien Cole. Victory on an event where it seemed nobody had a clean run and everyone would have their stories to tell from the stages. Just as the traditional rally season comes to a close, the Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship comes to life for its second season, starting once again with the Neil Howard Memorial Rally at Alton Park. A packed entry list of national rallying and single venue crews alike gathered at the Cheshire venue for what was to become an action-packed and challenging season opener. It would be Kevin Proctor that led from the start, Rallycross skills no doubt being put to good use on the extremely slippery infield sections of the opening stages that caught so many out. Proctor's lead would be over another Fiesta man, this time James Yates. Almost a year since his last outing and then in a different car, but back on the pace right from the start and lying second after the opening stages of the day. Over the next few stages there would be no change at the top. Kevin Proctor still leading the way over James Yates. The gap at the top was only 10 seconds though, due in part to a puncture for Proctor that meant arriving back at service with very little of the wheel remaining. And getting in on the fight now would be Steve Simpson, winner of this round last year and clearly trying hard to retain that title for 2016. John Stone and Carl Williamson joined the championship early this season. With the first three rounds already entered, they would hopefully be looking at a full campaign this year. Sadly, things started to go wrong on stage three with the water splash causing the pair problems with the car. Over the next pair of stages, there would be no change at the top. Proctor still leading the way, but change would come in second place. James Yates getting stuck in a chicane and losing some time, meaning he drops down to third with Steve Simpson happy to step up and take that second place on the leaderboard at this stage. That would, however, change in the next few stages. The engine on the Subaru calling it a day after a busy season. Thankfully, the car was due for a rebuild anyway, and at least it went out with a final crowd-pleasing run this weekend. So that left James Yates able to move back up to second, showing that the year out of the car certainly hadn't slowed him down at all. Maybe a second car could be on the Christmas list in the Yates household this year. The loss of Simpson would also see a final change to the podium as event sponsor Graham Coffey steps up to take that third place at the finish of an event he thought in hindsight he would have been better suited to the Fiesta. But that all means no change at the top. Kevin Proctor coming away with victory after leading all day. It hadn't been without its issues, including rearranging some of the scenery in the final stages of the day. But victory was Kevin's and hopefully will be the start of a full campaign in the championship this season for the Fiesta driver. Round two of the championship headed to Cadwell Park. And with the bad luck of round one hopefully behind him, John Stone would go out here on maximum attack taking the early lead, but sadly, it didn't last. Crashing out on stage two, causing plenty of damage to that legend fires Fiesta. So that would mean it's the lead for Ian Woodhouse now. A reasonable one too, 11 seconds of an advantage in that position on his first visit to the venue. For Steve Quigley, it will be second, leading the way in class four, and with the good result at round one, this was certainly showing promise for a good season ahead. Paul Swift returns with the car all fixed after his collision with a barrier at the opening round. Things were going well here to lie in third place, although a small alternator problem would be causing a slight issue. Bruce Edwards would have a little traffic to deal with on the opening stage, but he wasn't letting that or the conditions get to him. He ends the loop with fourth. And for Martin Hodgson, it will be fifth. Finding the stage is tricky, but managing better than some this weekend. With the stage lost due to accidents, it will be a slightly shorter run in the daylight for the crews. But there will be no change at the top for Ian Woodhouse, leading the way still, but only by 14 seconds. There would, though, be change in second. 
Paul Swift stepping up to that position. Now he just had to decide if a push was on for the final stages of the event. Things were not going quite so well for Steve Quigley as he hoped. Although third place was still a great place to be, and of course, still leading class four. It's all about the championship, but that's hard to think about when you're out there on the tarmac. Will Owen makes some good time up on the tarmac in these stages, joining the fight at the top, ending stage six with fourth place. The purchase of some new tyres helping that progress. And we also see Aaron Newby stepping up to the top of the results after a bad start to the event with power steering problems but he was still struggling with a lack of grip on the stages. So as the crews went into the dark, things would change once again. More time lost for Steve Quigley would see him slip down into fifth. He does, of course, still take the class victory though with that result. Aaron Newby manages to gain some more time towards the end of the event, ending round two with fourth place and closing in on the podium. And that final step on the podium would belong to Will Owen. A good second half to the event sees him taking that position and boosting his championship points. For Paul Swift, it would be gloves off going into the final stages. He could either settle for or push for the win. Unfortunately, despite a push, he reaches the end of the rally with second place at round two. So that means that it's victory for Ian Woodhouse. First place here at round two and a big boost to the championship for the escort driver going into the third round of the series. Round three of the Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship headed to the only two-day event of the calendar, the Rockingham Stages. And over the early half of day one, it would be Rhys Yates leading the way. His brother had already given the car a podium place in the opening round of the series, but now it was his turn. Paul Swift would be second, and with Yates not registered for the championship, it would be Swift that led the way there. The question is, would he push? or be happy with second in order to get those maximum points in the championship campaign. Once again, just like at round two, rear wheel drive would dominate the top 10 with Paul King next up on the results behind Swift. Just two seconds back in that third place overall. And for Bruce Edwards in the Darien, it would be fourth. The conditions on the stage getting a little better for the rear wheel drive crews as the morning went on, which of course meant more speed. Alan Kokodi joins the crews this weekend, not registered for the series yet, but he had been up against the regulars before, so he knew the pace and was keeping a good one himself in fifth. Over the next few stages, there wouldn't be much change. The lead of the event would still be Rhys Yates's. The advantage now over a minute in that position and not backing off at all in the Fiesta. But an incident with a tire wall would cause the crew a scare going into the overnight service halt. Change would now come in second place though, with Paul King taking that position from Paul Swift. The time's still close though, King going from two seconds back to three seconds ahead. And that, of course, meant a move down to third for Paul Swift. A good place to end the day and mount an attack for day two. Of course, still leading the way as far as the championship standings were concerned at this stage. On to the second day of competition then, and a cold start to the rally, but it didn't change anything for Yates. Leading the way still, and the advantage growing. It didn't look like anyone would be catching him this weekend. There will be further change in the other positions though. Bruce Edwards putting in some good times to move up the results now into second. And for Alan Kirkcaldy, it will be a move to third. The times were close, not much separating the crews at this stage in the event. It was all about keeping it clean, smooth and out of those walls. For Paul Swift, it will be fourth, now lying second in our championship runners behind that Darien up ahead. So a push would be needed if he wanted maximum points this weekend, and you can bet he did. And for Paul King, it will be a drop down to fifth. Still up there with the crews ahead, but not quite enough with them to keep that podium place at this stage. Frustratingly for Swift, that wouldn't be the way it ended. He ends the rally with fifth place. It was still good enough for second in the championship though, and a result that couldn't be sniffed at, given that that is what it's all about. For Paul King, it would be a place gained to move up to fourth. 
a good end to the rally, but sadly not the podium he'd had in his sights earlier on. Alan Kirkcaldy ends the event with the final step on a very Scottish podium. The engine going in for a rebuild now after a good finish to his 2016 season. Bruce Edwards maintains that good pace into the final stages of the rally, taking second place overall and the lead in the class, of course, now leading championship crew here at round three. But for this weekend, it will be a story of one man and one car. It was victory for Reshapes in that Fiesta, his first overall victory, and a great way to end his 2016 season in style. So that's it for our look back at 2016. We look forward to joining you on the stages, bringing you plenty more coverage throughout this next year. But in the meantime, if you missed any of our shows, then why not download the app or check out any of our social media for links to our previous coverage. Thank you for watching Special Stage.